So now we're going to look at a second example problem with friction. This time it's going to be static friction. I'll tell you that right now. That's your hint for this problem. This is actually one of the harder problems in all of physics. It is the infamous object on another object problem. Here's what I mean by that. Let's say we have a truck. Okay. And on this truck, we have a crate of apples. People like apples. And so we have a crater of apples. And then we have a stop sign that the truck must stop at, right? Because that's what trucks do at stop, stop signs. They slow down. We'll say that the distance is 50 meters away. We have a mass of the apples equal to, we'll say, 5 kilograms. And we'll also say that the coefficient of static friction between our crate of apples and the truck is 0.5. So the coefficient of static friction is 0.5. We're stopping in a, in a distance of 50 meters. And I want to know how long, how long, does it take the truck to stop so that the apples barely don't slip? And think about what slipping means. Like when you're slowing down on this truck, the crate of apples is going to start jostling around. So we want to stop the apples from moving. And so to do that, we're going to want it such that the shortest time possible to stop, such that the apples barely don't slip. Okay? So now, how would we solve this problem? Well, the same way we would solve any forces problem, we're going to draw a free body diagram. One thing we have to be careful about here is that we have an object on top of another object, right? So we need to be careful about this case. I'll tell you right now, we're definitely drawing the free body diagram for the apples and not the truck. The reason for that is because we want the apples to barely slip. We're not talking about the truck here, we're talking about the apples. Okay, so if we were to make a free body diagram just for the apples, let's think about what's going on here. Going down, we have gravity, right? Mg. Going up, we have a normal force, Fn. Any other forces? What's the force that's causing these apples to, to slow down, right? Now, we know the third force acting on these apples is friction. The difficult question is we need to ask ourselves, which way does that friction point? And the way I want you to think about this question is that friction always wants to oppose motion, correct? Now, let's imagine our apples on our truck here. I have a calculator representing the truck and I have my eraser representing the apples. Okay, and the apples are on the truck and as the truck slows down and stops, think about what happens when you're in a car. Which way do you feel like you're going? You feel like you're about to go forward, right? Like these apples feel like they want to tip over and go forward as this thing's slowing down. And the reason that they don't just tip over and all the apples fall down is because the friction causes it to slow down and not slip. So the reason that the apples stay in place and not move forward, because that's the way the apples want to move. Remember, friction always opposes motion. The motion is this way. It wants to move. The, the motion that it wants to move is this way. Friction is going to point in the opposite direction to keep it in line with the truck. And for that reason, static friction will point to the left. If that explanation didn't make it sense to you, maybe you could think of it this way. That what's the net force acting on the truck as it's slowing down? Is it to the left or to the right? If you're saying the net force is to the right because it's moving forward, you're saying not that the velocity is moving forward, you're saying that the truck is accelerating forward. It's speeding up into the stop sign. That doesn't make any sense. If you want the truck to slow down, you need acceleration to point to the left so that it can slow down. And for that reason, you need a force acting on the apples that is also causing it to slow down and point to the left. And so for that reason, the static frictional force points to the left here. And it's static because, once again, the apples are not moving. 
So now that we have our free body diagram, we have all the forces here, we can now focus on step two, which is a sum of forces equation, probably in the x direction because we're talking about static friction. So I'm gonna write F net comma x here, and it's all the forces to the right, there are none, minus the forces to the left, negative Fs, set that equal to mass times acceleration, the mass of the apples, of course, times the acceleration in the x direction. Question for you guys, do we know that acceleration? Is it zero? It's definitely not zero because this thing is slowing down. We have an acceleration, we don't know what it is yet, but that's fine because we do have an equation for static frictional force, right? Wrong, kind of. What's the definition of static friction? Let's think about that for a second. Static friction is less than or equal to mu s times the normal force. It's not equal to mu s times the normal force because the static friction depends on how hard you're pushing on the thing. However, there is one time where we can say F s is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And that time is, yes, you are correct. It is when we're talking about the maximum static frictional force. Now, are we talking about the max static frictional force here? Yes, once again, and that's because we're stopping such that the apples barely don't slip. In other words, if they barely don't slip, we're talking about the max static friction we need. Pay very close attention to the wording. I mean, I even underlined it for you. I don't know how I can make it any more clear, except of course, for giving you the answer, which, you know, they're not gonna do for you on the test. So don't plan on that. But yeah, we are looking at an equal sign case here for static friction. Do we have mu s? Yes, it's 0.5. Do we have the normal force? Not yet, but we can easily find it because if we look in the y direction and we remember that the object, the crate of apples, is not accelerating in the y direction because it's not moving up or down, then that means that all the forces pointing up are equal to the forces pointing down. And since there are only two forces, normal force and gravity, pointing in the y direction, these two forces must equal each other and cancel each other out. In other words, normal force is equal to mg, which is equal to five kilograms times g, which I'm gonna use 10, because I like using 10 for g, which will be 50 newtons. So now we can plug in here and find Fs. Fs is equal to mu s, which is 0.5 times 50. That's gonna be 25 newtons. We can then plug it back up here and actually solve for the acceleration. So negative 25 is equal to the mass, which is five, times the acceleration, the acceleration is going to be negative five. Now I want you guys to think about that for a second. Why is the negative significant there? What does it mean? It's not a mystery, it's because it's negative because the acceleration points to the left. It's slowing down. So for that reason, acceleration is negative five. Okay, so now that we have all of that down, we can now say what is the time it takes for the truck to stop so that the apples barely don't slip. And I'll tell you right now, whenever we're talking about time, 90% of the time we're talking about using the kinematic equations. It all comes back to kinematics, as it so often does with force problems. And that's because acceleration, as we will see, is the bridge between force problems and kinematic problems. If you're confused by that statement, here's what I mean. We have the five kinematic variables, V initial, V final, acceleration time, and displacement. And when we think about what we know and what we don't know, we don't know V initial, we don't know V final. Well, actually, that's a lie. We know V final. Look at the truck. It doesn't matter how fast it's going right now. What's the speed of a truck when it's at a stop sign? That's right, it's zero, it stopped. So V final is zero equals zero meters per second. What's the acceleration? We just found it. It's negative five. The time is what we are solving for. And delta x, we said it's stopping at a distance of 50 meters. So that's 50. And now remember the secret to kinematics is that as long as we have three of these five variables, we can solve for the other two. We have three of the five variables because we found acceleration using forces, okay? So now we need to plug into an equation an equation that doesn't have V initial, and the only one I can think of, is there even an equation that doesn't have V initial? I think they all have V initial. Yeah, they actually all have V initial. This is an interesting problem. I've actually never seen this before. 
in all my years of physics. Well, we actually don't have V initial. We actually have to solve for V initial first. Wow. You learn something new every day. <laughs> so first we're going to solve for V initial. And since we have three of the five variables, we can solve for whatever. So I'm going to solve it using V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2 times acceleration times delta x, where V final is 0. V initial is what we're solving for plus 2 times a, which is negative 5, times delta x, which is a positive 50. V initial squared, I'm oh, sorry, 0 equals V initial squared minus 10, 500. So V initial squared equals 500, and whatever the square root of 500 happens to be, that's what V initial is. You can see probably in the camera, I have a calculator, but I'm not going to use it until I have to. I'm very stubborn that way. And so now if we want to solve for time, we can use pretty much any of the kinematic equations. So I'm going to say V final is equal to V initial plus acceleration times time, because I think that's the easiest equation to use. V final is 0. V initial is square root of 500 plus acceleration, which is negative 5 times t. And once we do that, we can add negative 5t to both sides, or I'm sorry, add 5t to both sides, we get 5t equals square root of 500, and now, unfortunately, I am forced to use a calculator. So we have square root of 500 divided by 5, and we're going to get a time of 4.47 seconds. That's how long it takes the truck to stop in order for the apples not to slip. And that's going to do it for this problem and for my coverage of friction. If you have any questions from any of my lessons, feel free to email me, danw.tutor at gmail.com. I'd love to help you, even if, you know, it's free help. I don't care. I'm here for the people, and that's that. So thank you all for listening. I'll see you next time, and goodbye.